All right. So you've learned about the Pythagorean, Pythagorean theorem converse, um, special right triangles, trig functions, Sokotoa, um, angle of um, elevation, angle of depression, and law of sine. So the last thing that we have for unit eight is law of cosine. So law of cosine, um, just like law of sine, can be done for any single triangle, um, just as long as you plug it in correctly into this equation or any of these equations. a squared plus b squared plus c squared minus 2bc of cosine of a. What is super, super important is noticing where a and cosine of a is. So just like in our sine function, it was the angle and the side across from it, that's also the relationship here. So if you're trying to find what side a is, you need to make sure that you have what angle a is because that's gonna be in your equation. Okay, so let's try this. So if we have A, B, and C, let's, we'll name those different. We'll do A, B, and C. This has to be what angle A is. So angle A has to be 65. So what we would do is we would say X squared is equal to seven squared plus 12 squared minus two times seven times 12 times cosine of 65. Um, you can plug this all into your calculator. You just have to be very, very um, careful of how you um, plug it in. But I like to break it up to make sure that I don't make any mistakes. And then you can plug that in. So you get x squared is equal to 122 and x is equal to 11. It doesn't matter the variable, like the letters that you use, just as long as you stay consistent. So you could say that this is A, B, and C. Again, this has to be angle A. So x squared is equal to 20 squared plus 25 squared minus 2 times 20 times 25 cosine of 108. And I'm just going to break this up a little bit differently. Next problem. And the last one. So obviously if we know how to find a side length, we are gonna now find an angle measure. So the same thing. Um, if this is angle A, this is side A. So we're gonna use seven squared is equal to 12 squared plus 11 squared minus two times 12 times 11 cosine of X. So what we would do is we would just simplify this and solve. 
So 49 is equal to 265. So we would say negative 216 over negative 264 is equal to cosine of x. And just like in previous problems when we had to figure out what cosine of x is, we need to do x is equal to cosine inverse of negative 216 over negative 264 to get x is 35.1 degrees. So now it's kind of a pain in the butt when you have x in an equation up here on the top. So I'm going to provide you with, oops, I'm sorry. I'm going to provide you with equations that will allow you to solve for that angle on one side. So if we, when we use these um, cosine of x, it's gonna just be the, the variable. But just like in this equation here, um, cosine of a was x. So we could have plugged it into there. And the next problem I'm gonna do like that. So let's say this is A, A, B, and C. So when we do cosine of X, we need to do 16 squared plus 24 squared minus 35 squared all over two times 16 times 24. And I would just do everything that's on the numerator first. So 16 squared plus 24 squared So we get 2057 on top and 768 on the bottom. So we can do cosine inverse of 2057 divided by 768. Oop, I may have done that wrong. I, yep, this is wrong. I accidentally did plus 35, so minus. So we get negative 393. And you get x is 120.7.8 degrees. And the last problem. And you can always do these how you had originally, like for what we did for problem number five. I just find it easier that if I know what is going to be on the top and bottom. I can plug it into the calculator and solve. That just makes it a little bit easier. I think so. All right, so I hope that helps for you for solving um, law of cosine.